Tonight, could regional courts lose out under budget cuts and Broken Hill businesses left without power after a car collides with a pole? From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening everyone. Regional courts in South Australia could be forced to close their doors under proposed budget cuts by the state government. Local leaders are worried about the impacts, but the Treasurer says the cuts are not set in stone. They help hold accused criminals to the full force of the law, but these courtrooms could soon be on the chopping block. If budget cuts of the size that have been mentioned actually come to pass, there will be substantial reductions across the state. Officials have been consulting with regional communities, including Wyala, Port Augusta and Port Perry, to discuss potential funding cuts to courts in this year's state budget. With the government experiencing a shortfall of $330 million in GST revenue for next financial year. As with all agencies, they've been asked to have a look at uh, what savings or cuts they might be able to make. Chief Justice Chris Caracas says Port Augusta is likely to be saved because it's a regional hub and it's a new court. But the future is uncertain for other regional courts. They look at the smaller operations which can be centralised. Local leaders say the cuts will only shift the cost to other services, including increased pressure on the courts that will remain. Worries police may also be taken out of the line of duty to help fill gaps in the system. Majorly concerned if the police force numbers uh, decrease in Port Augusta because of increased activity, that needs to be monitored and maintained. The state budget is due to be handed down in June, but the Treasurer says no decision has yet been made to axe any of the services. At this stage, uh, we've still got a process to go through in terms of budget preparation. The Cabinet has to decide on things. And then after we know that, then we make our decisions about court services. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Many businesses in Broken Hills CBD were forced to close early today after a car hit a power box. Almost half of the city was plunged into darkness just before 10 o'clock this morning. Our reporter Patrick Reinke has the details. It was a peaceful morning here in the Silver City when suddenly it was lights out. A car crash causing a power outage to more than 1,500 homes and businesses. Police were called to this section of Crystal Street after a middle-aged man crashed his ute into a power box. The vehicle was heading towards the village shopping centre when it drove over a pedestrian crossing before colliding with the substation. A 56-year-old male uh, has been taken to hospital. Uh, he's been identified as the driver of the motor vehicle. Uh, police are conducting inquiries in relation to the incident. Witnesses say they saw the driver walk away from the crash and police say his injuries don't appear to be life-threatening. Staff from the nearby Musicians Club were first to the scene, keeping people away from the damaged power box and aiding the injured driver. Yes, uh, staff done uh, exceptionally well. Um, quite, very, very proud of them. Um, and they handled the pressure and the circumstances excellently. Some properties in Menindi were also affected by the power outage. Eastbound traffic on Crystal Street was diverted while emergency services cordoned off the area. Police stepping in to guide motorists through Argent Street intersections as those lights were out too. A number of businesses closed early while others managed to keep their doors open like the Silly Goat Cafe. Just before 11 o'clock, power was restored and the street was reopened. Police are investigating the cause of the crash. A woman has been arrested after allegedly breaking into a home at Port Lincoln last night. At around 10.30, an occupant of a home in Cove View Drive called police after a woman allegedly entered the property, stealing belongings before running off on foot. Police set up cordons around the area, locating the suspect in the front yard of a nearby home still carrying the stolen property. The 29-year-old was charged with trespass and theft. Staying in Port Lincoln and fire crews have returned from Victoria after battling to control bushfires burning in the state. Five firefighters flew over to join the 67 personnel in mid-March. Bushfires had been burning for more than 80 days, with more than 80,000 hectares destroyed. The team was based near the Alpine National Park and was helping Victorian CFS crews. The firefighters handed over duties to New Zealand fire crews. Wyala has secured a major coup with the city to host a local government association meeting this year. The news comes as council encourages ratepayers to have their say on proposed council reforms. 
Twice a year, the LGA meets in regional areas to discuss the industry, the opportunities and challenges facing them. Wyala has secured one of those meetings this year, with senior figures to visit in July. Senior local government staff and obviously the, the representative mayors that are on both the state LGA board and the SAROC board. So they'll all be coming. Up to 50 people are to attend the two-day event, said to be a big win for the city. Mayor Claire McLaughlin, who sits on the state and Air Peninsula LGA boards, says it'll also be an opportunity to demonstrate the city's recent progress. To see what we've got on offer here, hopefully go away and spruik it to everyone else how, how beautiful our city is. And as the LGA meets to discuss local government issues, while a ratepayers can also have their say. A state government survey is gathering opinions on a batch of reforms to the sector. From our point of view as a council, we really encourage our residents to take uh, part in this survey. You know, we're always open to, uh, to improving our services. Feedback has been taken on issues such as council conduct, financial accountability, transparency and regulations. Ms McLaughlin says it's a great opportunity for locals to shape the future of local government. Really key that everyone does participate in the survey um, if possible, uh, just to get the best improvement outcomes um, for our communities and ratepayers moving forward. John Hunt, 7, Spencer Golf News. Broken Hills local councillors have voted to set up a sport voucher pilot program. The initiative was just one item on a long list put forward in the chambers at their monthly meeting last night. Broken Hill Sport to receive a boost. What does the community think? That's what we're asking for. Under the new pilot program, school children will be able to apply for a $25 voucher to help them financially get into local sport, whether it be cricket, netball, footy and much more. More details about the program will be released soon. Unfortunately, it wasn't all good news at last night's meeting though. A proposed change to the route Perillia's trucks take from the North Mine to its southern operations was knocked back the decision made by roads and maritime services. We've been concerned for some time about how we can get the trucks out of, out of um, Argent Street. The current route sees mining trucks travel down Argent Street, turn left at the busy Iodide Street intersection before turning onto Crystal Street and going south. Council wanted the trucks to turn down Menindee Road and then onto Crystal, thereby avoiding the edges of the CBD. It is the designation of the road. So the designation of the road is that it's a state road. And so, and that is the priority. Other talking points from the meeting, councillors voting to donate $5,000 to Silver Lee Early Childhood Services and officially ruling out the demolition of the Visitor Information Centre in its cultural hub plan. You know, we're, we're being really honest and open with the community and throwing that stuff out there and, uh, and you know, working with the community to get the best outcome. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Teaports has entered the next stage of its Lucky Bay port project. Groundworks have begun on the site while grain bunkers at Lock are almost at completion. From Saltbush to a shipping hub, things are moving fast at Lucky Bay. Teaports' grain terminal project is fast becoming a reality as the company moves towards completing the multi-million dollar project. The earthworks and civil that started up the uh, the actual rigid inclusion of piling of the of the site will be finished on Monday or Tuesday. The actual port and associated infrastructure is starting to take shape. Meanwhile at Lock, the grain bunkers where grain will be stored have been completed. Three thousand tons of grain will be deposited over the next few weeks as the company undertakes testing. Just test procedures, weigh bridges, everything else there. Uh, make sure that make, make sure that everything is is running uh, the way it's meant to. Mr. Carvel says construction remains on course. The uh, port itself will be um, completed and ready for the 2019 crop. For the residents of Cal, it's a much-needed jobs creator at a time when Regional SA is crying out for employment. Mr Carvel says locals are getting excited as the facility starts to take shape. They're seeing that it's been built, we've had a lot of growers into site um, and they see that um, this is actually becoming reality. For John Hunt, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Port Perry Health staff going for gold in the SA Health Awards and the town preparing for a green energy boom. Welcome back. Port Perry's health sector is proving to be a heavy hitter with a handful of dedicated staff and volunteers making it as finalist in the 2019 SA Health Awards. State Health Minister Stephen Wade made a special visit to the town to commend finalists for their hard work. 
acknowledgement for Port Pirie's hard-working healthcare groups. The State Minister for Health and Wellbeing meeting up with local finalists from this year's Health SA Awards. A whole range of issues raised with me and it's, uh, it's great to, to get out in the country and talk to country people about country issues. The finalists from Piri have been chosen for the unique services they provide to the region's Indigenous population. Port Piri's Aboriginal Health Team acknowledged for the biannual Tarpari Wellbeing Day. Some of the uh, projects that have been rolled out here at, at Port Piri have been things like the Tarpari Wellbeing Day which brings together one and a half thousand people to celebrate Aboriginal culture. Having it in Memorial Park behind us, we're able to open it up to the wider community for that um, reconciliation aspect. Rosalind Mayfield also making it into the finals for her role as a McGrath breast care nurse, making it easier for women to gain access to lymphedema treatment in the mid-north. Lymphedema is a problem that women can experience after having their lymph nodes removed during breast cancer surgery. And people were having to travel to Adelaide uh, to have that treatment so it's great that they don't have to travel uh, now they can have it um, provided here in Port Pirie. The winner is set to be announced on Friday the 5th of April. Dominic Beaton, 7, Spencer Golf News. The Port Augusta Council has indicated it could seek a second evaluation of its ageing wharf structure after engineers determined it would require a significant rebuild. Consultants hired by the council estimate the repair costs would be around $11 million. But some councillors commented at Tuesday's meeting that they would like to hear a second opinion before making any big decisions about the wharf's future. No formal motion for that action has been submitted. $145,000 will be spent to repair a section of the Port Broughton seawall. A 37-metre section is said to be replaced due to it becoming corroded from storms. The council is hoping to eventually repair the entire wall to help ensure the safety of the esplanade. Part of the ongoing process of, of replacing eventually um, the full length of seawall here which is around 770 metres. The rebuild will be funded by the federal government's Drought Communities Program. Baranga West Council have greenlit a number of new green energy projects. From bulk buy solar schemes to Tesla marketed tourism, the town is gearing up for its own clean energy boom. The streets and skyline of Port Broughton are set to become clean and green, with an anticipated 300 residents taking part in the cool or cosy solar scheme. We'll put together common size solar system and battery packages at reduced costs based on a bulk buy arrangement. The scheme's success in neighbouring Port Pirie has helped fast track plans for a rollout in the town. Because we ran an open uh, tender process, they're able to pick up our program and run it straight away within their council. Looked like that it could be done and so we've made an agreement now with um, Cooler Cozy to establish a Barunga West community power network. Rebates on hooking up batteries and solar panels for houses will offer residents some wallet relief over the state's power prices. Easily, again, with a, an average size solar, a bigger solar system and a battery, you could easily save $1,000 a year. The town also investing in ecotourism with the recent installation of Tesla charging ports just off the main street. To let... Um, the electric vehicle owners know that Port Broughton is a place that a destination that they come for a visit, recharge and head back home. The council is now in the process of marketing the charging stations to Tesla owners in Adelaide. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. Boat operators using the Point Lola Marina are being advised to take extra care over the next few weeks. Council's begun work to replace two water beacons which have reached the end of their working life. While the marina will remain open, Council says boat operators should take extra care. They're being advised to observe all signage and be extra vigilant when entering and exiting the water. Stay with us after the break, a win for Wyala and art connoisseurs encouraged to get creative. Thanks for joining us. Port Lincoln and Elliston airstrips are set to secure a funding boost with the federal government investing $215,000 in upgrading the two sites. Four other airports around the state will also be upgraded as part of the government's remote airstrip upgrade program. It's the busiest regional airport in the state. Airstrips, when you live remote, are, are your lifeline. Port Lincoln Airstrip receiving $360,000 to resurface its runway. 
The Lower Eyre Peninsula Council and federal government splitting the bill. Workers expect to take about eight weeks um, and, will vol and will involve digging out the existing pavement uh, to a greater depth of 150 millimetres. The upgrade comes as a result of the increasing concern operators have for the safety of the airstrip. And they have concerns that uh, they believe the existing material increased the risk of paint and propeller damage to their aircraft. The airstrip measures 14 50 metres long and 30 metres wide, the project replacing the pavement with crushed limestone gravel. Minimise the risk of damage um, as it provides a finer texture on the surface um, while still capable of providing a long, like a long service life. Rowan Ramsey says the upgrades are important in making sure regional areas remain connected. Elliston Airstrip also receiving a cash injection. This is maintenance ongoing, long term commitment, making sure that we stay in business. Elliston will receive a much smaller amount of $35,000 going towards fencing and gateworks. The funding comes under round six of the Australian Government's remote airstrip upgrade program, which will improve four other aerodromes in the state. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Artists are being encouraged to get their entries in for the annual Pro Heart Outback Art Prize in Broken Hill. The competition has received plenty of interest from local, state and international artists in recent years, with over 300 entries last year. The top 50 pieces entered will be on display at the Broken Hill Regional Art Gallery. Organisers say the first prize of $20,000 is acquisitive, meaning the local gallery acquires the winning artwork for its collection. Entries close on the 31st of May. Port Lincoln's Navigator College has celebrated its 10th anniversary, with current and former staff and students gathering to share the special event. Guest speakers reflecting on the school's beginning. The disaster, which was the 2005 bushfires, began this school's journey. Navigator College opening its doors for the first time in 2009. The first day was just so, so special. There had been an immense amount of effort and hours put in, volunteered was to, to get to that opening stage. Kingsley McDonald wanting to open a school on his farming property after it had been destroyed during the fires. Travelling to Adelaide to discuss his dreams to the Lutheran Schools Association. We knew of other uh, kids that had um, left the district and uh, were going to Adelaide for schooling and uh, we thought there was time there was needed something, another choice in Port Lincoln. Tonight paying tribute to the hard work of friends and family in making the school what it is today. started 10 years ago with 100 students and now 10 years of time we've got 525 students. Even past scholars travelling here tonight to celebrate the school's journey. Amazing to see how much it's changed since we were there. Um, it's been fantastic to have a look at that. Matt Sivier graduated in 2013 and has now become a teacher himself. Uh, looking back and seeing some of the staff now and the relationships that I've built with those teachers then and how they've translated to now and what that's meant for me being a teacher now myself. The college says it will keep expanding and growing, always remembering and reflecting on their beginnings. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, we'll take a look at which fish are biting around the regions and Brett will have all the latest weather details. Welcome back. Now for a look at which fish are biting. What a fantastic time. We had this crossover season where our King George whiting is starting to pop up and we still have yellowfin whiting. So what a, what a day it would be out fishing. You come home with a quota of each. What a fantastic choice you've got. While you're out there, the blue swimmer crabs are starting to tailor down a little bit, but you can still get your last feeds. Don't forget, cryovac, put them in the, in the freezer. They'll be beautiful for patties or whatever you want later on. Um, we've looked around over the last couple of weeks and I've found that there's still some flathead floating around at the place. If you'd like to go around the second creek bank, you should be able to find yourself a good feed, nice in size. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Drawl North. Well, the signs are changing at the moment. Tides are starting to change over, that temperature's dropped. The first few squid are just starting to rock up, so if I was trying for those, there's not going to be a lot of them, but try a little bit further south, then around the bottom of the Flinders Channel. Also, while you're there, try for King George Whiting, because if the squid is starting to rock up, that'll mean there'll be a few King George Whiting around. There's a couple of snapper up around the east side snapper ground. Try early mornings, burly right up at the change of tide, and try for the next hour. Some really big snook down around, in around Port Patterson and Martridge's Bank as well. That's all we have from the Jeweler North. Hi, Whalers Fishing Report this week. Well, the talk of the town this week certainly has been a lot of good catches of King George Whiting starting to show up throughout the town. The best areas to target those has been out in the boats, 
anywhere between Wyala and the Cowlitz Landing Grounds. In around the four to six metre mark on the uh, natural bottom, there's been some good fish, still a few toadies amongst them, and only a few shitties getting caught as well, but some really nice King George whitings to get, a, get amongst them. Land based around Wyala, there's been some nice blue summer crabs getting raked off of the Cowlitz Landing, and a few coming in from the foreshore, and there's also some nice silvers. The hot target to go for those has definitely been around the Cowlitz Landing Grounds. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. We'll start over at Coffin Bay. Um, uh, there's been some really good catches of whiting out through the farm beach grounds. There's also been a few uh, salmon trout within the bay system at Coffins. Moving over to Port Lincoln, the crabs are starting to slow within the bay. Um, now that the temperature is dropping, the whiting have been a bit patchy in the bay too. There still are some squid around um, in the bay and over towards Boston Island if you can find some clear water. Um, but the group has still been fishing quite well for whiting and that's been the pick of the spots um, over the last week or so. Well, that's all for fishing tips this week. We'll see you again next week with more tips. Now let's take a look at the weather. Here's Britt. Thanks, Louise. It's been another sunny day across the region. Port Augusta 30 today, Wyala 29, Port Lincoln 26, Broken Hill 28, Port Piri 29 and Adelaide 27. The high pressure ridge over our region weakened today. Tomorrow a cold front will move over parts of South Australia. On the waters, southwesterly winds at up to 30 knots with seas at 1 metre. And sunrise is just before 7.30. Port Augusta tomorrow becoming windy with a top of 25. A medium chance of showers. Wyala showers and 23. Port Lincoln with a 60% chance of showers and a possible thunderstorm in the morning. Winds at up to 45 kilometres an hour in the morning. Coffin Bay, a shower or two with a top of 16. Woodna, showers in 20. Corn, 24. Broken Hill, partly cloudy with a top of 28. Port Pirie, cloudy with a medium chance of showers, 24 degrees. Clare, becoming windy with morning showers, a top of 20. Cleve, showers and 18. Kadena, winds at up to 50 kilometres an hour in the late morning and afternoon with a shower or two, 22 degrees the top there. And Adelaide, showers with a top of 20. Looking to the weekend now, Port Lincoln looking showery on Saturday with a top of 19, Sunday cloudy and 20, Cleve with some cloud cover on Saturday, fine and partly cloudy Sunday and Monday, Woodna looking partly cloudy, a top of 20 on Saturday, Sunday 22. A cloudy Saturday for Wyala with a top of 19, Sunday and Monday both looking fine and 23, Port Augusta a fine weekend, 20 the top on Saturday, Sunday 23, showers across the weekend for Kadena. Port Piri showers Saturday and Sunday with maximum sitting in the early 20s. Clare cloudy with a top of 16 on Saturday, Sunday 19. Broken Hill cooler but sunny on Saturday, 19 degrees. Sunday partly cloudy and 21. And that's it from me, Louise. Back to you. Thanks for that, Britt. And that's your local news this Thursday evening. We thank you for joining us. We'll have updates again later, but until then, enjoy your evening.